I have um, gotten a new picture of Bailey that I like a whole lot better. And even though these two pictures are in different lighting, at least the girls have the same uh, basic overall lighting coming from the front. Um, trying to make them look like they're in the same picture is going to be the challenge, of course, after the biggest challenge of uh, getting a likeness. I'm going over this with a very, very light, light coat of linseed oil so that my paint won't drag on the surface. It'll feel a little bit more like fresh paint. Um, the drawing, of course, is close. I say, of course. Um, it's close, and I always like to get as close as I can, knowing that it's, um, it's going to be a continual evolution to get the likeness, but you have to start somewhere, so you just jump in and go. And later on, you'll see that I have a few tricks to uh, help me. Um, and in, looking at this now, I think I'm going in way too light to begin with. Um, but it turns out okay in the end. It turns out pretty good. I'm proud of it. I keep the edges loose, and I aggressively clean my brush after every stroke with a paper towel. I don't use any turpentine or mineral spirits in my brush because I don't want to thin that paint down too much. I don't want to make it like a wash. I, I really am after some mark of my hand. Doing it this way, though, you have to be really careful that you don't um, make all of your colors chalky. But because I keep that paper towel in my hand all the time to clean that brush every stroke, I can avoid some of that. I never have been able to master the uh, suggested method of keeping one brush for dark and one brush for light. I can do that for a while, and then I'll look down, and both brushes have the same color of paint in them. So, um, for now, I'm working with what's comfortable for me, and again, that will change, I'm sure. Everything changes, that's why painting is such a challenge. Green is my favorite color for the turning of the face. It's a cool color, but because it's the complement of red, the skin color, it grays the red enough so that the, the curve is evident. I don't like to use blues because they end up looking dirty, looking like blues. What you use if you want a man's um, five o'clock shadow, and it does look very gray. Uh, I don't want that on these fresh young girls, for sure. Working with a fairly good sized brush here. This is um, oh shoot, it just slipped my mind. It's a bristle brush by Silver Brush Company, and it's, um, ooh, usually I just use filberts, but the one I just picked up was a flat, and it was their size 8. It's about a half inch, 5 eighths of an inch wide, and I work with bristles as long as I can. I'm not really after a William Bouguereau style finish here that looks photographic. I'm after a more painterly look. Trying to stay away from those small brushes as long as I can. I'm also paying attention to the form, the um, where the cheekbone hits the light and where it curves back into the facial structure with the muscle. And then you come back out to the light where the jawbone hits the light. That's what I'm paying attention to here is how the light falls on the form and whether it's a cool or a warm color. I'm potsing around way too much with the mouth right now for this stage. Doing a little bit of negative painting here with a mixture of ultramarine and alizarin crimson. I keep a half, a 50-50 mixture of that on my palette because it's used a lot. Um, the color of green I'm using is a permanent green light. It's by Gamblin. I like gambling colors because they are moderately priced and very good quality. Now you can see Glory's face in the computer. I'm still off on the drawing. See the way her chin and her um, 
mouth are on a straight line and they're really more of a curved line but I'll get that measuring here I've got the monitor set up a little bit bigger than life size so that I can hold my arm out and measure it and then come back to the painting and be the same measurement it's what you do in life as well when you're painting from life as you measure from the model to your canvas there are lots of fine portrait artists to project or trace their drawings um, to size uh, all kinds of ways to get your your overall drawing on that canvas uh, anything of course is okay it's just whatever your comfort zone is even when I've tried tracing or God forbid projecting I never can get that um, I feel like I'm painting in the lines like a coloring book and the challenge for me is to see if I can get a likeness without that um, by painting shapes and shadow shapes it's a little bit harder on this because the light appears to be square on her face so I'm not picking up as many shadows as I would like but it was such a good picture of her um, so that's why I do what I do the drawing is still off but I'm basically worrying about skin tones right now and the thing I love about oil is that you can always come back in and have another go at a likeness or make a minute change um, you kind of have to get past this stage to see where you are with it and then you have to figure out okay on my painting which which feature is the closest to the actual one for example if I choose the eye then I first make sure that the eye is the right width and then from the eye I measure from the inner corner to the bridge of the nose and I make sure that's correct from the bridge of the nose to the um, bottom of the nose where it attaches on the face and so on um, I'm still off here quite a bit you can see that the chin comes out too far but um, because the paint is fairly loose and the edges are loose that'll be an easy thing to correct later <coughs> excuse me trying to stay away from the small brushes again every once in a while it sneaks in I have a tendency to want to be diddly way too soon and some of that diddliness is an avoidance tactic to keep you sitting in front of the easel so you don't freeze your brain is kind of processing what you're doing and uh, that just keeps you moving and again nothing is permanent at this stage well, I don't think anything's ever permanent. You can look at the old masters in the big museums where they've taken x-rays and you'll see that underneath was another figure or the length of an arm changed completely after it was dry or it was scraped off and something else entirely was put on top. how pretty that green is there on that with that red my flesh tones are mixed with cad cad red light and um, either a cad yellow or cad lemon and of course white occasionally I'll slip a little alizarin crimson in again Glory's got an olive tone skin so I'm keeping it fairly warm Bailey on the other hand is um, European descent, so she's got a peaches and cream complexion. We'll see how good that turns out. Okay, say hello to one of my little tricks. Uh, it's a sheet of tracing paper. Um, I have a laser printer, and I can print an actual size print and pretty darn close color. And I do a quick tracing of the print and then lay it on top of this wet oil paint you can see that this tracing won't last very long and now I get into some serious measuring and Bailey's face I decided to position a little bit further away so the print doesn't show that or the tracing doesn't show that look how straight Glory's face is from the brow bone to the chin almost looks like Angelina Jolie at this point
And even though it looks like it's off quite a bit at this point, that is so easy to fix once you figure out which elements are right. It may not be that the eye is the wrong size, it may be that the brow bone is off. And one little stroke of paint can completely change it. And that's why when someone comes in and says, oh, her face is too flat, you go, uh, well, if you go in and try to start fixing that, bringing the nose out, you'll mess up something else that's a whole lot bigger problem to fix. You have to be very, very careful when you're figuring out what's wrong. Here comes the tissue back again. It's so close. I liken this to a dance. Um, a little forward, a little back, a millimeter here, a thirty-second of an inch here. You can have everything right, and it still won't be a likeness of someone. It'll look like a girl, but it won't be her. Focusing on um, her jawbone and lower chin right now. Um, again, working with the shadow shapes and trying to get the temperature right, the warm and coolness of those shapes. I'm kind of, um, right now anyway, a fan of value is the key and that is the inherent lightness, lightness and darkness of a color. And the theory of that is, I picked up really from pastels, as long as anything is a value, let's say mid-value 5, whatever color is a mid-value 5 can be used in that spot side by side. So in other words, if you use a, a red value 5 and a um, red orange value 5 and put them side by side, from a distance those are going to read as the same color because they're the same value. Shadow shapes I try to keep fairly simple without a lot to distract you because that's not the most important. The role of those shadows is to show you where the bone structure of the face is. So you don't want a whole lot of decoration going on in there. And the rule of thumb is to keep your darker colors real thin and uh, fairly smooth. And keep your lighter colors then can be thicker and more uh, virtuoso with brush strokes and and uh, thick paint. Movie camera's really picking up some uh, pretty skin tones in that cheek. We'll see how long they stay there with my wandering brush. Q-tips are always handy to have in the studio. Um, wet paint, if you get too much on, it just starts to muddy up, so you can either scrape it back or wait for it to dry. Always make sure that your edges are very soft at this stage. Then you can go back when you know everything is right and everything looks like a glory. Then you can go back in and add some hard edges. Pay attention where the light hits. If you really break it down, the face is made up of a series of balls. You've got a larger ball on the end of the nose, two sm a smaller ball on each side. The uh, What I call the moose, that's the area around the mouth, is pretty much a ball. And the cheeks are a ball, the eyes are a ball, the eye socket is a ball. So if you go back to Art 101 and the uh, 
exercises of actually understanding a perfectly circular form and how to shade it, where the reflected light is, where the highlight is, you break that down into the face and you can pretty well do a painting that way. Okay, here's another tool of mine. I use. I learned this from Richard Smith. It's a an ordinary walking cane. I've got my eye on any time I can find an old crook neck carved one. I'd rather have than this metal one just for the aesthetics. But it hooks over the top of your easel and it acts as a mall stick, um, which is just a fancy word for something to support your arm. Remember I said she had an olive toned skin, so I'm trying to remember that myself here as I'm working into some of these areas. Smoothen the hairline, because hairlines are never hard. I mix a lot of my paint directly on the canvas. I uh, use a very limited palette, and I'll put that down below for anybody that's interested. I want the colors and the different pigments to have their own personality. I don't want them all mushed together where you can't tell what was used to mix them. I think if you look at one of my paintings up close, you can see where I used green. You can see where I used a loser and crimson. If you mix them within an inch of their lives, they lose their intensity, they lose their charm. And that's something else I learned from working with soft pastels. You put on a layer of red, and if you want to tone it down, glaze over it with a little bit of green, and it tones it down. And the same thing holds true in oils. I've said this before in some of my other videos. I don't like music playing in the background. Um, I use it all the time while I'm working, but in a video, it tends to annoy me. <laughs> Doesn't take much to annoy me. Um, because I don't want to hear the same music over and over on repeat. Um, I would rather have silence, and uh, you can play your own music in the background. And if I have something to say, I'll say it. And if I don't, it'll be quiet, and you can watch. Besides that, you may not really want to hear my music. Fiddling with that shadow shape right underneath the chin where it curves back in under the lip. Trying to figure out how much of hers is gone because of the strong lighting or how much should really be there. If your source photo isn't good, you are handicapping yourself. Particularly if there's a flash involved or two or three different sources of light, do yourself a favor and get a better photograph. That's a mistake that beginners often make when they don't have the skill set to know how to counteract a bad photo. They don't understand the lighting and the form. So it's a good idea to wait till you've got a good photo. <laughs> 